Next in Line podcast where we are helping to prepare you for whatever is next in line. As always, I'm your host, Chance Pitts, and I would like to thank you for tuning into this episode. Guys and gals, if you're listening to this podcast, the odds are that you saw the title, and yes, it is true, I have failed 75 hard. But before we get into that too far, I want to take care of the housekeeping, guys, as always. If you receive value from this episode or any other episode of the Next in Line podcast, I would ask that you share the show with like-minded individuals who could receive the same kind of value. That's going to be the number one way for us to grow and to reach more people and, in effect, help more people as well. Now, guys, besides that, another way you can help us grow is to leave us a rating or review on whatever platform you find yourself listening on or like and comment on that uh, video or platform whatever you're listening on as well if you're allowed to do so because that's going to help with our overall exposure it's going to help us pop up a little bit earlier in the search bar when people look for self-help and personal development type podcasts also guys make sure you're checking us out on social media that's at next in line development on facebook instagram and tiktok there's all kinds of cool content motivational stuff some workout stuff health tips personal development All the things you can imagine in social media that you would expect out of our podcast here is located there. We'd love for you to join us and give us some feedback. So, guys, we are still in the midst of training for the Habanero 100 Ultra Marathon. It's a 100-mile race that we have coming up in Cat Spring on August 20th. Super excited about it. Um, Have a little bit of a stiff calf muscle and knee, so taking it a little bit easy this week. Still getting some good mileage in, uh, but not hitting it quite as hard as I'd like to, but that's okay. Everything comes in moderation at this point, uh, just seeing how we feel. I'd rather take time and be rested up for the actual race than risk injuring myself this close to the race. It's also going to be cool because I have some friends out there that are going to be running the 100-mile relay. It's a five-man, 100-mile relay race that's going to be taking place at the same time as our race. So it'll be awesome to see those guys out there. I wish them good luck. I know they're going to kill it. Uh, But guys, let's get into the reason why we're here. Uh, This is my third time going through 75 hard, and I have officially failed out of the program. Now, it took me three times to actually fail. I've made it through phase one, two, and three uh, through the full Live Hard program as well. But we're officially at the point that I have failed. And now this gets a little bit more tough for me because my dad just finished. He did a fantastic job. Uh, He got it done, killed it. Came out the other side with some awesome lessons learned um, and just some some fantastic new mindsets and approaches to the way that he's approaching life and different situations within it. And then also my wife just killed it as well. She did phenomenally uh, working through her 75 hard and she's got a new outlook as well. And she's gained some great, great perspective and uh, great mental fortitude out of it as well. So having two people complete it and just have this stellar outcome the way they had around me as I failed on day 47, so over halfway done. Uh, It's really tough, guys. It kind of sucks in a lot of ways, but it's not your typical failure in a lot of ways. Now, don't get me wrong. This is 100% a failure, did not complete, um, but I'll explain why it's a little bit different. So for those of y'all that don't know, that hasn't, haven't kept up with the fitness trends or haven't listened to any of the past episodes when we discussed 75 Hard. This is a program by Andy Frisella in which you have to take 75 days of doing a set number of tasks for that day. And these tasks include two workouts of 45 minutes each, one of which has to be outside. Um, they're supposed to be spread out. They are not a continuous workout of an hour and 30. They are two separate 45 minute workouts during the day, taking a progress picture every single day, reading 10 pages of nonfiction, personal development type book or literature, uh, drinking one gallon of water, following a diet to a T and no cheat meals or alcohol. That's 75 days in a row. If you mess up on any of these tasks or miss one little thing, even the picture, or the 10 pages, whatever it is, if you fall asleep in the middle of reading, you have to go back to day one and start over. And it's a self-policed program. Uh, You really see the benefits for yourself out of this program. I highly recommend it to everyone. There's some reviews out there that say it's crazy and extreme and wild and too much for anyone to take on. But being someone who's gone through the program, I guess, two and a half times and being surrounded by a ton of people who have done it as well, 
Uh, I cannot recommend it enough, guys. It is what you make it. It's completely scalable, and it is 100% doable if you can change your mindset, fortify your mentality, and just go in and know that you've got no other option besides killing this thing. So, guys, the reason that I failed the program this time around was actually because of my diet. Whenever I came into this uh, round of 75 Hard, I decided to approach it with two dietary specifications that were the requirements I was going to utilize. So the first one was I was going to follow the paleo diet. That's natural foods like nuts, fruits, some vegetables, and mostly meats. Uh, so it's a very natural diet, no processed foods, um, very strict list of items that you can eat. And that was something that was tough to do with some of the workouts that I was doing and some of the endurance runs, uh, but it was manageable. It was something I could definitely take on. But now we get to the little bit less manageable part. And that is that I chose to fast, do an intermittent fast while I was on the program. So what I did, for those of y'all not familiar with intermittent fasting, is I would fast for 16 hours. That means not eating anything. Um, and I would then eat for an eight hour window within the day. So I was only allowed to eat between the hours of 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. And that was my fasting uh, 16 to 8 ratio that I followed. And I was on the paleo diet. So I was constantly battling with getting my nutrition in because one of the other issues that you see with some paleo foods, especially uh, a lot of the filler foods and non-meat foods, is that they're not as calorically dense. So you have to eat a lot of these foods. And when you're a little bit picky like me with some of the vegetables, it's hard to get all your nutrients in whenever you're running a long distance every evening and working out in the morning. So you're burning a ton of calories and it's really, really hard to keep that up and find that balance so you're not losing too much weight, but you're achieving what you want to do. The thing I liked about the fasting was it kept me from overindulging in any kind of foods that were trashy, along with the paleo as well. The paleo cleaned up the diet, and then the fasting side of it made sure I wasn't eating a ton of stuff right when I woke up in the morning or eating a bunch of stuff before I went to bed. A lot of the benefits I saw was I lost uh, some body fat percentage doing that as well. I never really felt bloated on this diet uh, as much as I would eat meat wise and and really load myself up in that window so I could kind of keep up with my calories and make sure I was covering base on it and finding that balance. I really could never find myself overeating. I couldn't find myself feeling any kind of trashiness or bloat. Um, I Like I said, I slimmed down around the waist in the midsection with some of that body fat that I wanted to get rid of for a long time. I'm closer to having an actual set of abs than I've ever been before. Um, and it's just, it had some awesome benefits. I was also a lot more mentally clear. Um, I was quicker on my feet. I woke up easier. It was, it was a lot of things that I really appreciated. I didn't feel sluggish or tired after meals. I didn't have the mid-afternoon lows after lunchtime of being tired. It had a ton of great health benefits that I noticed in my life. But ultimately, during this 75 hard, it was my undoing. Because, as I stated at the beginning of this podcast, I am also gearing up for the Habanero 100, and being that we're seven weeks out, I'm in a pretty stiff part of my training schedule. The reason I failed on day 47 was because the week before, on about day 40, I did a 17-mile run on, I think it was Saturday or Sunday that y'all saw, uh, posted on the Next In Line Instagram and TikTok pages. Uh, I was super behind on my nutrition when I started because I was fasting. You burn a ton of calories when you're running that kind of distance. So it really was detrimental to my overall running. And it wasn't something that I felt that I could sustain and try to do some of these longer distances. So on day 47, I guess technically day 46, I decided to not fast in the evening uh, that way I could build up some more calories, put some more carbs back into my body. And then I woke up on day 47 for my 24-mile run down on the beach in Port Aransas and decided to go ahead and eat in the morning as well so I could get ahead. 
The funny part is with paleo and some of the things that I had uh, at my disposal to eat, I was still actually a little bit behind on my calories. So it was kind of crazy the way it worked out. It didn't fully hit the benefit that I wanted, but it definitely made me last a whole lot longer on my run before I got that far behind on my nutrition to where I really started feeling the effects of it. So that's why I failed 75 hard. I made the choice to not fast because it was becoming detrimental to my overall ultra running training. And the lesson I want us to take from that is that sometimes winning the battle, winning the 75 hard, getting that complete, checking the boxes and doing all those things isn't as important as winning the war. You have to give a little bit strategically in some spots. Maybe you got to lose this town over here or this small city so that you can keep the capital on the other side so that you can win the overall war with the footholds that you still have. And what I mean by that, guys, is if I would have let myself continue to fast, if I would have let myself continue to stay behind on nutrition the way I was, yes, I would have successfully completed 75 hard for the third time. However, it is much more important to me that I have good training sessions for this 100 mile race because Honestly, guys, the 100 mile race and the completion of my first time going that distance on a race as challenging as this one is, is more important to me than 75 hard is. Now, that's not to discredit 75 hard. Like I said, I highly recommend it to anyone who would be willing to try it, uh, who wants to move themselves in a positive direction and honestly just accelerate their life and their mental fortitude in ways that they've never seen before. I think it's a great, great program. But I've got goals that have grown past that point right now. Honestly, I'm still living the lifestyle in a lot of ways. I still work out twice a day. I still read. I follow a diet. I have given up drinking alcohol. I don't do that anymore. Um, there's some other factors. I still drink a gallon of water. There's, there's all kind of things that I still do that are now habitual things in my life that are good practices that I want to just maintain. So I'm really living the lifestyle in a lot of ways, and I haven't given up that much ground. So I want to focus on the bigger things in my life. And I think a lot of times there's many of us that get caught up so much in these small things and we get wrapped around the axle with these little problems and these little things that come our way, inconveniences in our life, that we fail to see the bigger picture and we miss the golden opportunities in a lot of ways. I know at work we have a bad habit of doing this. Uh, we had one time, we had an invoice come up that we disputed for a while. I think it was like a $400 invoice that came our way during one of our meetings with about six of our employees in there. Now, once you start calculating up hourly wages and all of those things, you had six very high paid people arguing about a $500 invoice for an hour straight inside of a meeting. If you really want to talk about missing the point of giving up this small battle and letting that one go so that we could win the war and come out further ahead. That's a prime example. We could have been doing other things to advance the company, to move ourselves in the proper direction, to make more sales and to drive revenue in a profitable direction rather than arguing about this small invoice in the grand scheme of things. Now, $500 might be a big invoice in your industry. However, we're dealing with heavy equipment on this side and that is mostly a small invoice for us. So guys, just putting it all into perspective, it's kind of like those arguments that we all have with our significant others where something they do just drives us up the wall. I can think of one right off the top of my head with my wife and I'm going to apologize for outing her after I just bragged on her for her 75 hard. But whenever I go in the kitchen after my wife is done cooking or cleaning or anything, which she does a phenomenal job with all of those things. Uh, and she definitely takes care of her fair share of all of that, plus some. But every time I go in there after she gets done cooking or cleaning or whatever she might be doing, I know for a fact that there is going to be cabinet doors left open throughout the entire kitchen. And it is one of my biggest pet peeves. It drives me insane to no end, every time I walk in there and there's just cabinet doors open, not to mention we have a very small kitchen in our current living situation, so it's really easy to hit your head on those cabinets, and uh, it just kind of makes you go into this 
this seeing red rage when that happens. But I know that if I bring up that conversation about the closed cabinet doors, I will be giving up ground on the other side whenever she decides that, okay, I'll show him. I'll stay out of the kitchen. I won't take care of the cleaning. I won't take care of the cooking. I won't thaw anything out for dinner whenever I get home. Guys, what I'm trying to say is don't get lost in seeing the trees Focus on the forest and the beauty of it all. Don't get wrapped up in the small things that don't matter in life. Don't get wrapped up in the little setbacks, the little failures. There's going to be speed bumps. We've talked about this I don't know how many times. Whenever you look at a stock chart, whenever you look at sound waves, whenever you look at anything with any kind of positive traction or correlation, there's going to be continued ups and downs. There's going to be highs. There's going to be lows. And guys, that's just life. But you have to take your time and you really got to see what's worth spending your time on and putting your energy into. Because if not, you're just going to end up in the same place every single day, pissed off about the same little things, and you're not going to be able to enjoy life in the way that you want to. So I challenge each and every one of you on this Thursday going into this weekend, don't worry about the little things. I want you to look at the things that you can control in your life. I want you to focus on the things that are factors that actually make a difference and actually matter. And I want you to go out and have the absolute best weekend and most productive weekend you can focusing on the things that matter. Guys, don't get wrapped up in the little things. Don't get wrapped up in all the BS that isn't going to matter an hour later or even 10 minutes later for that matter, guys. Just live your lives and see how much more enjoyable your life can be. Guys, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Next in Line podcast. Make sure you're sharing the show with whoever might find value in the lesson that we have here today. Also, check us out on social media. That's at Next in Line Development on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And guys, always be prepared for whatever is next in line.